Yes, the real media. KJAG Radio and KMA Entertainment, your source for entertainment news and interviews in Central and South Central Kansas. The best of the best are here, and we go above and beyond to bring you the most bang for your buck. Find us on the social sites like Facebook and Twitter. Log on to kjagradio.com and jiggyjaguar.com for more. Thank you. Good night. All right, here we go. Well, thanks for doing this, my friend. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank now, uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, performing at the White House. Well, I was uh, working a lot as an accompanist, playing for uh, the studio of a wonderful voice teacher in New York City named Joan Later. Joan would bring me in to play for various people who were working on uh, all sorts of projects. And I would have to say that I owe a lot of... Uh, not a lot, but uh, quite a few uh, aspects of my own career uh, to Joan because of people she introduced me to. Yeah. Uh, namely, in this particular instance, an opera singer named Frederica von Stada. Uh, Flicka, as she's commonly uh, yeah. known as. Um, she, at the time, she was working on a recording of The Sound of Music, a new recording. It's when opera singers were doing crossover. Yeah you know, uh, sort of work. And uh, she was, I believe it was with the Cleveland Orchestra maybe at the time. Well, I was brought in, it was my first time meeting her, Joan was working with her, and I didn't know, you know, who she was. Yeah. And uh, I could tell this is a special voice, it's a special singer. And so uh, Joan had to take a phone call for a second and record a call. So we're making That's small cool. talk. And uh, uh, so I asked Flicka, you know, she's got all these bags from Bloomingdale's and Macy's and, she, you know, and working on The Sound of Music, so I'm trying to piece it all together. And uh, so I said, so what do you do for a living? She kind of looked at me funny and she said, oh, I'm an opera singer. And so I felt like that was probably stupid on my part. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> fast forward after, she, after the lesson, I was playing the, for the next person as well, a normal person. Person, yeah, you know, like a, a Broadway person, and uh, I asked Joan, I said, who was that woman? She said, go to Tower Records, when they're <laughs> go to the opera section, <laughs> and just kind of thumb your way through and you'll see exactly who she is. <laughs> well, okay, I just kept feeling myself getting smaller oh, no. and smaller and smaller. But I figured, how was I supposed to do? I'm from Hub, Mississippi, I never knew anything about opera. Yeah. Opry. Opry. <laughs> so it were. Uh, but anyway, uh, Flick and I really hit it off. We, we really worked very, very well together. We became great friends. And uh, she was invited to uh, perform. It was a summit conference uh, between the first George Bush, the President of the United States, and Mikhail Gorbachev. His wife, Raisa Gorbachev, is a huge uh, opera buff. And uh, I think Flicka's father and uh, President Bush had been in the CIA together, and so it's sort of a political slash family connection uh, that she was invited to do wow. this particular performance. And so we were, I was her, you know, my yeah. at the time, I was playing a little off-Broadway show, and uh, I started freaking out because I found out we are going to have dinner, it was a state dinner, of course, you know, and one of them was yeah. there, and then a concert to follow. So. Of course, my biggest concern is what fork do you use? You know, <laughs> table etiquette, you know, things like that. And you know, it was it was an intense and quite fantastic experience. I must say, it's a highlight that you know of my life that yeah. I can you know it was it's a dream. I mean, that, yeah. that sort of thing is just a dream experience. That is really cool. So now uh, you're a resident of Las Vegas. I am now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about Vegas. Is it as crazy as? Because I've never been there. <laughs> I've had people try to drag me there. One of one of our uh, one of our camera people, Ross Long, goes out there twice a year and gambles. And this year he took a, he bought a hat can and he uh, rode the zip lines and he did all sorts of different things and he just loves the hell out of Vegas. So for someone who's a, who's never been to Vegas and is a non-Vegas type person. Share a little bit of the experience. Vegas was never on my radar, I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, but I, you know, got to called to come and audition for a show. I said, really? Because I'd never auditioned for a show before. 
yeah. one again. That's just not how we get jobs. But I did. I flew out, got hired, ended up moving there. It just felt like in my soul it was the right next thing to do. Yeah. But I remember auditioning at the Paris, walking directly across the street after the audition to the Bellagio, where, the, where it has the dancing waters in front of it. Yeah. Uh, that I'm sure you've seen in movies on yeah. Ocean Eleven, you know, Ocean Twelve. Um, looking back at Paris thinking, could I actually do this? You know, because it's not really Paris, even though there is an Eiffel Tower, and it's, you know, it looks like the Arc de Triomphe, but uh, it's like an entire town based on escapism. It's, it's adult mm -hmm. fantasy land, you know, for sure. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a gambler. I've never been attracted to that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's probably a very good thing because I'd either be very rich or very broke. Probably <laughs> the latter. The broke. Mm, yeah. Knowing my own uh, sense of luck. Anyway. But uh, what really blew me away was 10 minutes away from the strip proper. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a desert surrounded by mountains. So what's naturally there. And, and I'm an outdoor person. I, it, mm -hmm. It just blew me away what I what I saw. That is really cool. The light, trees, hiking, uh, yeah. mountain climbing, pretty much anything you want if wow. you're into that sort of thing at all. And, and I love that. And, and yeah. I was seeing how much green and brown can one actually really, you know, get into because that's pretty much the colors of the desert. <laughs> and uh, initially, that's all I saw. But then, yeah. after I'd been there for about a year, and I actually saw seasons the way the, the desert reveals itself yeah. uh, over the course of a year, it, I really fell in love with it, I, I, have That's to say. Cool. I have to say, and dependable weather goes a long way for me. Having spent 25 years in New York City where you have to watch the local news weather oh, yeah. station to figure out you know, how the day is going to unfold because it, it can change at any point yeah. in a place like that back east. Uh, to wake up in the morning, I was in such a habit of doing this thing, look out the window, so what's the weather going to be? It's always beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know. That's cool. Yeah, every day. You now, actually uh, make plans. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's good. The last time I talked to you on the phone, yes. uh, you mentioned you were working with a, with a, I'm trying to remember, was it like a boys choir or something? Uh, no, it's a show called Jersey Boys. Yes. Actually. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, essentially it's the story of Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, coming from New yeah. Jersey and mm -hmm. how they you know, became who they were yeah. and, and still are you know, to, to a degree. Frankie is still performing. Uh, his own show, and uh, he's still around Vegas, you know, a good bit. And uh, one of the original Four Seasons has passed away, but the other three are still around. And uh, so you never know who's going to show up at the show. That's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's pretty great. It's wonderful. Cool deal. Yeah. Now, uh, talk to me about social media. Do you do a lot of that? I'm really bad about it because <laughs> I'm like a, like I said, I'm such an outdoor person. That means I would actually have to sit at the computer and <laughs> keep up with it. <laughs> I'm pretty bad about it. You know, I had an assistant for a while who essentially was me. <laughs> And uh, people say, oh, we're friends on Facebook. I always say, are we really? Says, well, <laughs> you befriended me. So exactly my presentation. So eventually I said, this, it's, but that was when it was beginning, though. Yeah. You know? I said, well, that, that would be great. It's a great way to put myself out there and be uh, among, at least, you know, maybe uh, late 20th, early 20th century hip. Yeah. You know? Uh, but it's not smart to let someone else be you. Yes. And so I'd rather. I, I mean, I'm still. I'm still on that. But as far as keeping up with it, I'm not the best because yeah. there are too many other things that you know I like to do. Well, that's cool. Me away from that. Now, um, you just watching some of your videos on the internet, listening to your music and everything. It just fabulous, fabulous artist. How do we get young people to get into the music that you're doing? Well, I'll tell you, in the concert that I'm playing tonight, I'm telling my story. I came from a place about half the size of this, of McPherson, yeah. where, I, where I am right now. And um, I just I share my own... Yeah. It's a testimony of sorts, it really is. It's how I began as a, as a four-year-old, yeah. growing up in it, people I met along the way. Um, because there, every place I've been, there seems to be some kid out there who has no vision of themselves beyond the way life is right now. 
and I'm sure everybody's had that feeling. Oh my God, nothing good will ever happen to me. I'll never get out. You of know what's funny about that is originally coming from McPherson. That's that. It's it's crazy being able to talk to someone who's a world class performer like you, you know, in the McPherson Opera House. It's the craziest thing in the whole a world. Lot has, a lot of moving on has to do with with luck. A lot of it yeah. has to do with and luck. By that I mean when preparation meets opportunity. And you can say yes. So yeah. uh, my advice, and also part of my mission is to inspire education first and yeah. foremost, uh, beyond uh, the social skills on the, on the internet. Yeah. Actually, interacting with people, uh, being involved in, in, in activity, you know, playing sports. I played sports you know, growing up as well. It teaches. Uh, certainly team spirit, it teaches ensemble, it teaches citizenship in life itself. Yeah. You kind of have to learn, you know, uh, maneuverability in life as well. How to how to know when the goal is open, when to pass the ball on a basketball court. You also, also have to know who has the ball. Same as it is in life, you have to know when to move, when to, say, yeah. when to say no, when to hold off for a minute. You know, it helps you assess situations, generally speaking. And also, uh, if I leave anybody with anything, it's it would be to uh, release fear. And I, I want to always speak to particularly younger people about not being afraid. Yeah. Not being afraid to play in church. Not being afraid to, uh, particularly any artist, like a singer, or a dancer, or a pianist yeah. like me, um, looking for opportunity and facing. Uh, there's an author I used to read, Dr. Richard Moss, who always described fear as forever evading another reality. And that's true for so many. We hang on to what we know because it's safe. Even if we're miserable, we'll still make that choice because it's what we know. Yeah. We don't know the difference of what is beyond. And had I not learned to say yes to certain opportunities when it felt right in my soul, uh, I'd still be in hope. Yeah. You know, be a church pianist and a band. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, yeah. In fact, I, I, if I could do that at this point, I would certainly entertain you know the idea of moving back to a place yeah. like that. You know, Las Vegas is not the end of the road for me. Like I said, it was never on my radar. Neither was New York City growing up. You know, I remember yeah. as a kid, people say, "Oh, you should play on Broadway." I didn't know what Broadway was. I played <laughs> opera singers. I didn't know what opera either. You know, so you just never know. The thing is, mm -hmm. is to read, to study, to expand your mind, whatever it takes. And, and it's through education, I think, that we begin to uh, open our minds to a world beyond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, before we let you go, I have to ask you about uh, your Rodgers and Hammerstein work. Talk to me a little bit about this. <laughs> I've never in my career had the opportunity to play Rodgers and Hammerstein. Exactly. <laughs> I can't believe it. I've done, I think, oh eight Broadway shows on Broadway, seven national tours of Broadway shows, five shows in Las Vegas that originated on Broadway, none of them Rodgers and Hammerstein. And that's some of the most famous uh, musical theater that exists. I mean, you know, they kind of invented it. And I just never had the opportunity, and so I always close this particular concert anyway with uh, um, it's my tribute to their music because I love it so yeah. much, though I've never played their shows. But it lends itself to uh, certainly singing and acting, but from a pianist's perspective, to have melodies like that, they don't write them like that anymore. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's it's kind of like. My, uh, it's it's a it's a plea. Please, one day, let me have the opportunity to play <laughs> Oklahoma, the sound of music. You know? Yeah, uh, all something. Those things. Yeah, throw your bones, something. <laughs> like, <we're> just... <laughs> I just like to play play one classic like that. So much yeah. of my career was playing, you know, new works or or uh, edgy, dark, you know, uh, uh, limited, you know, mm -hmm. appeal shows. Yeah. Just a good old RNA. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> amazed because you've done Cats, you've done Lion King, you've done all these things, and it's like, but no Rogers and Amber's Yeah, I know, Carousel, you know, South Pacific, jeez, yeah. nothing. Anyway, it's, it's my favorite, it's one of my yeah. favorite things. I always have to pace the entire concert to get up to that particular yeah. one, because 
quite frankly, it hurts. <laughs> it was my own arrangement. I could have made it simpler for myself. But I love their music. And it's, it just it demands passion of whoever is doing it. Yeah. And because mm -hmm. of what I feel whenever I, have, I come to that point, uh, I can only imagine what it must be like to be able to do yeah. one of those shows. So. Well, uh, before I let you go, uh, yes. you did, uh, from what John Holacek, the great John Holacek, uh, <laughs> told me earlier, uh, you did fabulous on the radio this morning. How was the uh, radio experience uh, here? In well, it was akin to this one. You know, someone asked you a question, and I like to talk, which is uh, a good thing and a bad thing, I suppose. You know, uh, as a kid, I never would speak. I hated announcing. And I talk about this in, in the concert too, because I do I have to you know clue people on how did I get to McPherson via New York City, Las Vegas, you know, yeah. the White House, all that. So part of my my thing is uh, in the beginning, I hated as a kid playing recitals, and we didn't have printed programs, and so my teacher uh, insisted that we go to the middle of the stage, stand at the piano, introduce ourselves and the recital piece. That's all there was to it, you know, and I just I just hated it. Just hated it. So just <laughs> give me the piano, let me play. I don't want to speak. But you yeah. know, um, yeah, interviews are. Uh, uh, I find them to be tough because uh, you know you get sick of talking about yourself. You know, it's like I lived it. I'm still. Yeah, it's hard enough. You know, over going and through, over. You know, it's funny because on the on, from from the outside perspective, I, you know, I can even look at my own resume. You know, and. It, it is fabulous, the opportunities that have come. It's been an amazing journey. But to have an opportunity to come into a community and share part of my own journey through yeah. storytelling and through the playing of music, it gives people an opportunity, also listeners, uh, the chance to experience some of that great music yeah. from a framed reference, you know, from my perspective. And so um, doing an interview from, you know, from that perspective, it, I think is a, a serviceable concept. Well, thanks for doing this interview. It's my pleasure. It's, uh, it's been fun. And, uh, yeah, it's fun to how do we find you on the internet before we let you go? Uh, I have a website, fullformberry.com, and uh, I've got you know, all my music is up there, and usually uh, calendars of you know, what, I'm, yeah. what I'm playing. I like this and this thing. Well, it's fun. Well, it's thank it. you, sir. My pleasure. I appreciate it. From Fred Phelps to the Kinsey Six, the best of the best from Central Kansas and beyond. We do it all. We are KJag Radio and the Jiggy Jaguar Radio Show. Log on to JiggyJaguar.com and KJagRadio.com for more.